In a previous video, we took and drew this foundation plan up based on an X-Ref from the floor plan. And just kind of want to show that all this stuff over here, um, these are layers that are in here, and they're, they're there, so if you purge the drawing, you can't accidentally get rid of these. Um, gives an example of everything, their sets, um, how they are set up, what what kind of sets they're in, landscape, MP and E, um, notes, structural layers, XREF layers, 3D layers, um, general layers, drawing layers, and civil layers, uh, boundary layers, and architectural layers. Some other time we'll go through what all those mean, but I just want to show that you can actually, we'll probably keep those titles because we might want to find one that's going to fit for what we need. We are going to be working on a structural dimension, so I don't need architectural dimensions. These are just by their layer. Um, I won't be needing the size. I won't be needing civil. General, I might keep, just like to keep general around, and I don't need those. So I'm going to delete those. And if you look, all those layers are still here. And the one that would not delete is this layer here, which is um, it's simply frozen. So I can click on it, um, I can, or locked, sorry, and unlock it. Then I can delete this, and it is the XREF CDs ML. I want to remember that because I want to go back down here. Type X to get me down towards those XREF CDs ML. Just relock it, and that keeps our, in case we move this, the plan that's referenced uh, right here and unloaded at the moment, um, it will remain in place. It doesn't get lost. We will need to create a foundation for these little guys here too. So now that we kind of get this done, I guess we can we could show that as well and then get it dimensioned out. So um, I do a lot of just layer matching. So this is a stem wall layer. It's plenty appropriate if I wanted to use it for that. However, uh, no, I might. Um, we can look through our structural layers and see what kind of stuff we have. It is foundation, so I have stem. I've got masonry. I've got uh, joints for like control joints and then the footing. And so we will need a footing for that. These are framing layers, and then these are columns, um, and then stuff for calculation. So um, what we've got here is just the need to draw a little line around there. I'm going to use the stem layer, so I'll make that current. And I can do a line or a polyline, so PL for polyline, which will make it one continuous line. Bring it out to here, over to here, and back to, whoop, missed, but that's easy to fix. Just extend it, EX, and grab where I want to extend to. I use the standard mode, so if you look at like extend or trim there's a mode down here in the bottom left and that mode I keep mine set to standard they have the new quick mode I found it a lot harder to control what I want um, there are some things that uh, are definitely quick about it and maybe if you got used to it uh, might work better for you so that's that's a personal choice on something that however you'd like to do it now I have the same thing going on over here but before I do it I'm gonna offset this um, just going to do an 8 inch little turn down in here and it's just going to be the footing that's underneath won't be very deep it's just um, so it's not even connected to this footing because this footing we're in Montana and this is down deep and the frost level and this is just a little pad out front so it won't even be the same connection or connected to that so now I'm just going to take both those elements mirror them uh, about the center point and I get a duplicate down here. I do like to save often, so save. Um, <clears throat> now we just got to mention it, put on some notes, that kind of thing. So I had to have my structural layers up here. So if I copy or even just move it, because I don't want the text that's in it. It's even got some, um, I'll show you. In fact, let's do that. Let's show you what, what this text does. This is a, um, okay, I use a standard of 18. I don't know, I'm kind of jumping around on how I'm talking here, but bear with me. Offset, 18. So we're going to offset out 18 inches. That's our first layer of dims, second layer of dims, and I have up to three layers of dims. So I just plant those lines there and then put them on a layer, something like T1, 
layout aids or the G junk layer, um, just to show that they're not real elements in the drawing, they're just there to help guide me. So um, this is just one long wall, there's not much to dim dimension here, so let's just move this into place. I'm going to grab the end of it, I'm going to bring it up, and I'm going to dimension to my baseline, and that's what I call the outside bearing line that I keep continuous in almost all of my structures for through the framing um, and the foundation. And then I'm going to pull it into this closer line here. And then if you look at the text, if I double click on that, I'll be able to change the text. It's 32 feet, so that's right. Um, and you'll notice that's got its own kind of highlighting. And that's because that is taking the actual dimension that it was. This is a text I amended onto the end for that block up there, not block, but the set up there, just so I knew what layer this was on before even touching it. So I can delete that out, and let's say I accidentally even backspaced and deleted that information. If you want it back, you hit the, um, the less than and then the greater than sign, and that will bring that right back for you. So <clears throat> that's one way to dimension, and these should be set dim uh, out. I'd like to have the in the fit, no leader. Okay, so this is, should be add leader. Even though it's not necessary to have a leader on a length, a line this long, we will need it here shortly. So I just put it in there, and I think I'm going to move it out a layer because uh, it might make it easier to read when we put in the next set of dimensions. So I try not to cross dimension lines at any time with another dimension line. And so we're going to just show the thickness of this wall here. I'm going to bring it up, let it snap to there. You can see there's no text or anything in that. That's because it's on this layer up here, foundation stem. If I just MA for match properties, select the one I want to match, get my paintbrush symbol, and then I've got an 8 inch. To clean this up, I'll move it over to this side. I just think it looks better. I try and keep it equal in space in between when I have these small ones that have um, a leader added to the dimension line. I keep them somewhere about the midpoint of these. That's just personal preference again. Um, here, let's dimension this whole long line. So I'm on a strew dims layer. And so this should turn out to be green but it will still not have all the properties that we need. And so I'm going to bring this out to the second one again. And you can see, oh, it's white. Oh, it is still drawing here. It's because I had that other one chosen. So let's show how that works with the N, which is my notes layer, structural dimensions. And so here, just again, I'm going to MA for match properties, match these. That's good. And then let's show, in this case, um, we can let's show a dimension for that footings width. And so I'm going to go somewhere, and I try and get to places where the lines, it looks like this line set, they almost line up. You can see where the hatch pattern, or the line type pattern is offset at an angle down here. It would be harder to do because the dimension line string creates a line of its own, and it starts to block off some of that information. It's typically going to regardless. But, oops, that snapped away up here. And that was because my snaps just grabbed that point and I wasn't paying attention. I'll bring it back down to something reasonable. And then it's going to jump out when I match properties because it should be one foot six and it won't fit in there. So there we go. And let's just pull this out. That red line, remember, does not plot, so I don't care that it's in the way. And that does look good enough. To, I try and get this even angled. I'm that picky. So I'll get that nice, nice looking there. And then uh, we should mention our doors. We've got our footing. Um, here, there's a trick to this if you want it to turn 90 degrees. If you set the properties of this, you'll see the, oh, sorry. I have to only click once, not to text edit, but to edit the whole piece, it's a single click, not double. Down here, you'll see the text rotation is set to zero. If I set it to 90, you would expect it to turn 90. So I've hit tab. Oh, it didn't turn 90, did it? But 
if you set it to something like 0 0.01, you can't tell that it's barely off, but it'll put you to something a little nicer. And then again, I do like that line to look better than just coming off the end. I think it's more representative of this is what I'm mentioning. Down here, let's do the doors real quick. Dimension that guy to there. Bring it out. Missed, but we'll fix that later. That one to there. I don't do center lines on garage doors. I do do center lines on framing um, of man doors. And so I'll just come up. You can see it when I snap to it. If I'm close to that line, it should be snapping out there where you can't see it. But so it'll it'll run up to be where it is and get you right on. They can be barely off, and that's that's kind of a pain. But and then when they're this small, they're hard to line up. I mean, you can get in there and do it, but it's easier to first match your properties. <clears throat> Come in and let's bring this one out. That is set. And this dimension, it's a rectangle. I've already got that dimension back here. No reason to replicate that here. So down here at the bottom, I'm going to take and do our inner string. Oh, I'm not out 18 inches from my furthest object. So being that I think I've kind of got this far dimension as I need it for those other areas. Let me get rid of these. Did I kill something? I did. I do. E. So here, um, one thing I can do is do an X line. Make it horizontal. That's XL space H. Drop it on there. And then I'll set that 18. This is such a quick deal. I'm not going to worry too much about um, Changing the layer. I would normally change up the junk layers, but this is a really simple project, so um, I'm just going to make it happen pretty fast. Let's go there. I want to know this dimension. I want to know this dimension. Let's give it this one. And this. And this. So, again, to get that offset, because you can see all my lines, they're, they're going right to it. When you plot that, there's no color, so it looks awful. So now it's got an offset away from that to show it's a dimension line and not. Gosh, this has the full dimension on the other end. I don't even need any more than that. I don't need these other lines that are out here. So, like I said, it was so easy. Why bother changing the layer to be that quick? Um, here, I'll just put in some pretty straightforward stuff just to show about where this is occurring. I do kind of like it to be about that 18 inch length so it looks nice. That snapped down to this end. Did you see that snap? Um, you could see that symbol appear and I wasn't paying attention. I'll do it again. So we want a linear from here to here. I got up close and see how that down there on the on the way down here you can see that showing up even though I'm down here I just got too close so if I come out here it will keep it from doing that and there is that one then I just need to get a dimension across somewhere around in here that middle uh, since I have an offset with my dimension should work out just fine and we'll come out here now we'll do our match properties to get these to jump out like they should. And I think it's pretty straightforward that this is just an all around dimension for that footing. So some notes and we'll be good there. For me, um, I could just insert notes one at a time. Instead, I just open my stuff out of my blocks, <clears throat> such as Go to my blocks evolving, I've got annotation, and then I need to find not joist tags, but regular tags. Tags. 
there they are. There's two different scales in here. Um, some stuff I use for site, and I'll keep building that up. I just started doing that larger set for site plans and such. But this is the one I want for quarter inch drawings. So I can see my scale down here is quarter. This is one inch equals 30 feet. Um, so here we are on structural tags. So it's these guys that I'm going to need. Control shift C. Control shift C because I'm taking it from one drawing to another drawing. And that is going to my foundation plan and deets. I don't know why I called that and deets because that is a layout. I'm going to change that name before we're done here. Before I XREF it into another drawing, because then I've got a mess on my hands. So then I'm going to paste it, Control V. I can pretty much drop it anywhere. I just want those here with those layers and the arrow sizes, the spacing, all preset up. And so here I can take this, put it over here, and say NEA. So it says near. I'm going to put it near there. And then I'm just going to change this note, <clears throat> and it's just going to say um, 8 inch turn down. Oops, all caps. Turn down. And click outside of it, that'll accept it. And then I've got a, just do the same thing here, but we're going to put it about, uh, grab the line, that'll work. Then if I grab this, and I grab the text, don't click the arrow, grab the text and pull it down, it'll bring the end of the arrow with it. They're tied together. Now I can bring this down and clean it up and make it look nice. I don't like straight leaders. I find them confusing on drawings. They start to look like lines in some places, especially in detail drawings. This is a very particular thing of me. Um, and so here, I'm just going to put that this is an, an eight, eight inch um, thick footing by 16 inches wide at, at or below frost depth per design criteria. And there's a design criteria sheet. So when I hit enter here, oops, not enter. When I click out, it's gonna give me a different, I, there's a way to modify the way that this looks outside. But if you do it in here and you use these, it's actually a lot easier. Just come pull that out before you get too far. Make sure everything's gonna fit where you want it. Let's get a little close to that, but it's really easy to fix by just simply moving. I'm going to cross select and because I want to grab the arrow as well, and I'm just going to drag it straight across. You can see this line is creating a, I can, you know, stay on that straight until I get to where it's hitting another green line and I'm happy with its position and the fact that it's pointing at a line and not empty space like that would be empty space. I prefer it point at a line. And then we can come in here and make another copy of this guy, put it over here. And to make things a little random, I like to sometimes not have a dead center. I think it looks nicer. Um, here we've got an 8-inch wide stem wall. Oops, bad spelling. Stem wall to bottom side of slab. So we're going to pour the slab over the top of this wall. Contractor may decide he wants to do it a different way, but that's the way I prescribed to keep it clean look, but um, that's really his option. Side of slab. So, oh, do you notice there's just kind of this faded line there? That's just because on the XRFs I've still got this loaded. So simply unload, don't detach, unload, and then we've done a little bit of work. Let's hit our save button. And boy, that's, I mean, pretty close to having a uh, plan here. So I'm going to move these out just in case I think of something else I need. And then in here, I need to tell what's going on with the slab. So I've got some notes to that. So I'm just going to I for insert. 
and I could go look one up, libraries here, go to my annotations, which are in my blocks evolving, annotation, and you can set these things up here. That is right here, in case you forgot, right there. Any folder that you're currently in, you can add that, and it'll put another folder that you're in, so you can move it around and organize it as you want. Um, Oh, I think I just saw the concrete slab area leader. And so I'm going to open that. Now, I don't know why AutoCAD does this, but you have to come back over to blocks, grab it, and bring it in. It didn't used to be that way. I think that there must be some reason that I'm unaware of as to why it does that now. Again, just my use of curves for my leaders. I really don't care much for straight leaders. I think they get confusing in a, a drawing full of straight lines. So I would say we've got ourselves a foundation plan with the exception of a title. So let's take this, copy it, bring it over here, put it someplace appropriate. Looks about right. And we are going to call this foundation plan. <clears throat> And I've got that set to underline automatically. I'll position it a little cleaner. And there we go. I can cut this out when we do the insert. So what I've got here is a drawing that I'm not happy with the name of. So I'm going to save it, close it, go to my Outlook, and rename it. Or I can do a Save As, rename it now, and just get rid of that and deets. I don't know why that's in there and hit save and I'll just go back and kill that other file later. So that's basically our foundation plan. Um, I sure wish I could see what my record time was at. It is at 22 minutes so um, we'll place this in a sheet in another recording so that I don't hit that mark where they... I think I might be okay with YouTube now. I did verify my phone number. We'll see what happens. So. I don't want to have another one that I've got to redo. I'm going to save and sign off. Save and see you next time.